Coming to you live from Jodie Foster's Day 2 Advent Calendar Life-Sized. I said that all in the wrong order. Yeah, that just came out weird. It we should did. make it clear Jodie Foster does not endorse the Advent Calendar. No, she doesn't, but she did loan it to us, or pretend Jodie Foster did loan it to us, yeah. her life-sized, uh, building-sized advent calendar. And today we are broadcasting from room two, because it is day two in the advent calendar, where we are keeping up with all of the, uh, we're... We're not keeping up. That was the no, problem. Is that was the problem. <laughs> with the question. We didn't keep up, which is what we're going to be trying to do now. Catch up. We're catching up. That's the word I'm looking for. We're catching up with all the things that we neglected over the year. Over the entire year. Yeah, it's real bad. It but is real uh, bad. are we are we wearing any festive Christmas sweaters today, Matt? Yes, mine has an enamel pepper grinder on it. <laughs> oh no! Like wearing a Santa hat. <laughs> Oh no no that, no no! Uh, that will that will be a callback. No to day no. One of the Advent. no. So if you didn't if you didn't listen to day one, don't. Maybe you don't want to listen <laughs> to day one. I don't know. That's going to be on you. But uh, I'm still I'm still trying to process it. So. Oh god. Okay, so back in February of 2018, anonymous writer says. I've struggled with this for a long time, and I thought I'd ask you what you think. I'm sorry you've had struggled with it for ten months longer than you thought you would. She's probably solved it by now. Yeah. How do you handle know-it-all beta readers and critique readers when they keep telling you how to fix it or just point out everywhere you've broken a writing rule? How do you respond to that respectfully? How do you hold on to your sanity when you have to wade through crappy feedback to find the good criticism that will actually make your book better? Oh. (laughs) No. Yeah, I don't. Okay, guys, if you want us to keep things anonymous, say so at the beginning. Oh. So uh, I'm going to make a note to edit this. So you've got asshole beta readers and critique partners, possibly people in a workshop that you don't They're really appreciate. Yeah, because you usually should choose your beta readers, and if your beta That's... readers aren't helping, they shouldn't beta read. So shitty beta readers. Shitty beta readers. How do you deal with shitty beta readers? Bes- I, mean... I guess besides... Just ignore them and take what advice you want, which is kind of the basic yeah, answer it's supposed, here. But... It's, supposed to be, it's supposed to be like a salad bar, really. You know, it's like you want the hammy bits, you don't want the blue cheese. Right. Unless you're a blue cheese fan, then you want the blue cheese. I, myself, don't care for blue cheese. I respect blue cheese, but I don't care for it. Focus, Matt. Sorry. Um, no, like, I'm, I'm sorry, but like, my, I don't, I, I don't deal with... You shouldn't deal with shitty beta readers. I'm just going to flat out say that. Like, I know workshops and groups work for some people. I'm not even necessarily saying don't attend those things, even though I hate them with the Fire of a Thousand Suns. But, yeah, like, if you don't, if you're, if you're, if they're nitpicking you to death and it's not something you're finding useful, just don't listen to them, you know? The best thing you can do is, like, pair your beta readers down, man. Like, I learned yeah. that a long time ago, you know? I... I have two or three that I really trust, and that's, like, more than enough, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think one thing to do, and and you can do this sort of, um, you can always focus on this, like, in the beginning of a workshop and not, like, point fingers at any person who's being critiqued or any person doing the critiquing, but just basically say, once you're done with your critique, you're done. And if the person chooses not to take your advice... That's their choice. So if they keep nitpicking on the same thing that you don't want to choose, that's on them. Or, or you don't want to change. That That's a fuck up on their part. And you don't need to listen to it. Yeah. Um, yeah. You can politely thank them. You know what you do is you like make it look like you're writing down what they're saying on a notepad. And just say, really, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you. Yeah. When yeah, you're literally, you're literally just writing fucking useless and block letters and like coloring them in. Uh huh. That'll that'll appease them and then they'll shut up because they yeah. think you're taking them seriously. So just be like, thank you. I'll uh, I'll chew on that and then write, you know, fuck this person. Yes. I don't know. Try that. I think that's some useful practical advice. <laughs> yes, and then um, and you know, you follow it up by saying, 
Uh, how do you hold on to your sanity when you wade through crappy feedback to find the good criticism? Well, again, I'm assuming you're sitting in a workshop with pe- some people you don't actually have chosen. And so if you mm. if you discover they're not giving you good advice, don't read their critiques. I mean, you know, if it, it's, I, it's, I, I, like, is it like you're getting a bunch of critiques and you're having to read through all of them? Yeah, I'm thinking people are people are all handing you critiques of your work, and so you've got yeah. either cop- several copies of your story or several written letters of things. And, you know, just, you don't have to listen. You're an adult. Yeah. You, you don't mean, have to listen. You don't have to take their advice. You can just smile and nod. I absolutely agree with that. I think, I think the perspective we may not be acknowledging here is it's very hard as a writer not to pay attention when anybody says anything about your work ever. Yeah. You know, you feel compelled to like agonize over it. Like one of the first things you need to learn to do, and this is a, this is a hard, this is a very hard thing. It's a very hard thing, but it's necessary is you have to learn to disassociate your ego from this process. Like I was reading this thing was going around Twitter a while ago about like uh, editorial letters from your editor Mm -hmm. and like how to like, deal with them or whatever the fuck and i mean i've gotten i've gotten all kinds of editorial letters like i've gotten you know ones that were very polite but critical the ones that i thought were completely i i have no ego about my work like i learned that, that was very necessary early on so i don't care what anybody says about it that's the only way you can achieve objectivity and that's what you need to do you need to reach an objective viewpoint where you can go all right this seems relevant this is something i'm gonna chew on that's a really good insight this has nothing to do with me i don't know what fucking story this person was reading like, you need to be able to objectively look at them. And the only way to do that is to, is to find a way to disassociate your ego. Because that's, really that's really what's affecting you, is you're reading this stuff and you're, you're processing it through a lens of like, well, come on, get, how could they not see what I was going for? This is, this is a completely nitpicky thing. Like, that's necessary to the story. Like, you're, 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 you're employing your ego and your own attachment to your story and your craft and your process to these notes. If you can be objective about them, you can just file through them and like, you know, sort it's easier to sort out the good from the bad. Yeah. That's my take anyway. Also, one thing you'll re- you'll realize as you gain experience as a writer is someone will say something bad about your work and you will realize instinctively that they're not going to appreciate the story ever at all unless they wrote it. Yeah. And I, I feel a little awkward saying they just don't get you because that kind of makes me feel like you're edging into sensitive artist land. But honestly, some people are just, it's like, you know, people who start out their two-star reviews with, well, I don't normally read science fiction. And then I read this clone book and it sucked. I'm like, okay, well, I think I get to stop <laughs> reading your review after that first sentence. <laughs> So, what accent were you doing just then? I'm just curious. A snobby reader who <laughs> thinks that I should listen to him. <laughs> that was a good accent. Connecticut. Like, Connecticut? Yeah. You're picturing him, yeah. Somebody with an ascot. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Actually, oh, I'm, I'm picturing uh, the guy wooing, the rich guy wooing Kimmy Schmidt from uh, season one with his, who says that he doesn't understand how the other half live because he's never been on a a public blimp. He's only ridden in daddy's blimps. Right. <laughs> so, uh, you just got to learn that there are going to be some people who never will appreciate what you're doing. And then you don't have to listen to anything they say. Really? Yeah. I firmly believe if you, you write a story with any level of, you know, not any level, but like a certain level of experience and competency, something that somebody can objectively say, well, this is coherently written at least. You write a story, I feel like if everybody in the world read that story, a third of the people would think, not a third, yeah, a third, a third of the people would think it's brilliant, a third would fucking hate it and think it's garbage, and a third would be utterly indifferent, you know? Mm -hmm. It's just, they're people, and we're all different, and a lot of us suck, and you just got to deal with the fact that no matter how good a job you think you do, there are always going to be people who hate it, Mm -hmm. Like, like viciously hate it. It's a strange thing, but it's, it doesn't matter. Every story that's ever been written, every book that's ever been published, millions of people fucking hate it. If it was a popular book, you know, probably yeah. not least. Really you can go and, and look at uh, J.K. Rowling's and Shakespeare's and Neil Gaiman's reviews on Amazon. Yeah, plenty of one. Everybody gets a one star. Everybody. So, yeah, that's, that's, that's criticism. Uh, I feel like we did a pretty good job with that one. I think so. You need to realize we're going to pat ourselves on the back after every single one of these. 
Yeah, you know, I like to assess my performance <laughs> in the moment. Uh, well done, Matt. Good job. Yeah, I need a lot of yeah. I need a lot of encouragement. It's not it's not cool, but that's my issue to work on. We're not going to deal with that now. So, anonymous writer, I'm sorry it took us so long to get back to you. Hopefully, you've left this toxic environment completely. But if not, consider it. To me, there's nothing worse than a room full of writers. I'll just say that, point blank. Your wedding reception like, had a lot of writers there. Yeah, but none of us were talking about writing. That's what um. was, You know, I had cherry-picked, like, the three or four that I can stand, and then none of them were allowed to talk about writing. But you fill a room full of writers, we were talking about writing, and it's a terrible place. I don't want anything to do with that. All right. Yeah. Just my opinion. All right. Happy holidays, everybody. Yay! All right. Uh, Merverse.com is where you can find me and Mighty Mer on Twitter. And then uh, where are you, Matt? I'm on Twitter at Matt F.N. Wallace. Matt-Wallace.com is the website. And then my YouTube channel, Angry Writer. So because he is that. both of those things. I am. <laughs>